Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are tuned in from. Welcome to another episode of What Now? We just keep on going and um, we're still full on in a pandemic. So it's just we're still on lockdown, but we still keep being motivated and we're still keeping inspired by these conversations with these amazing artists that uh, want to join me for this. And so my next guest today is actually, it's exciting to talk to him. The, the way we got together is uh, pretty interesting. So I'm just gonna get him in here because he's already in here. And I see that he figured out how to. Um, for those who don't know it, my guest is Luck from the Mood Doctors. If you don't know their music, check them out because they're amazing. For what's on time. <laughs> Always on time, first, awesome. First First, first rule of business. <laughs> no hip hop business. This is like right nah. on time. No fashionably late. <laughs> uh, no, nah. you, you, you got to be on time, on time. If, yes. If I'm being late. <laughs> I love it. And, and welcome to your first Instagram live. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I Yay. <laughs> you did it. You, you sent oh. me a request. <laughs> it kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good, man. You know, I mean. I mean, first of all, you know, salute to everyone who 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 lost someone in this pandemic. Um, yeah. I lost a dear friend of mine who I literally grew up with in the Bronx um, to this COVID, and also uh, another guy who who lives next to Walton E, who I knew for shit, I mean ten years, named Mr. Gaskin. He lost his life to COVID. Yeah, that's terrible. Well, I'm just yeah. saying, man, no matter where you at, you know, just realize it is real. Yeah. I mean, you know, people talk about, oh, well, the numbers are inflated. But, you know, I mean, even if I even, you know, I'm in America. So right. our numbers are two, 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 a buck, 200 okay. and K. So let's say if let's say if half of that's fake. That's a lot of people. It's still it's still real. Yes. People are it's still, still dying. And it's still, and it's still if we quantify by numbers. Right. It's still a lot of people. 50,000 people is a lot of people. Like, you know, it don't make a difference how you have it. And even if it's one person, that one person has. A family, right? Um, if it's a mother, then it's now a mother. It's now a, a child without a mother. If it's a father, you know, it's and and those people right. gotta feel for those people. Yes, yeah, so I'm sorry to hear about your loss. I yeah. I, I know some people that obviously passed away from COVID as well, mm -hmm. and it's just pe hearing people say that it's not real or it doesn't exist or it's a hoax or it's the government trying to control everyone. Whatever it is, I feel like this is not something you can chance with, that you can't take a risk with this. Even if it's not real, let's just pretend it's real okay. and just take precautions and, and stick to, you know, not spreading it if, if it is, if it does exist. So that's, um, yeah, I totally agree with you. And it, it, it always has to happen to yourself in your own circle before you start realizing it's real. Yes. A lot of people. Um, that's that's what just happened to our president over over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? That's a that's a whole other topic that I don't even want to go right no, now. No, no. I'm saying he he, fought, he he unfortunately he caught it. Well, he may not have. There are conspiracy theories that no, no. that make him feel like he's going to push the vaccine because of this. And now, unfortunately, he caught it, and then his statement was, "Oh my God, oh oh oh!" It's like, dude. It's real. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Let's let's leave let's leave the, the so called president of the United States out of this conversation. There's too much <laughs> going on about that. Um there's enough going on in the world that I do feel is is worthy of talking about. Yes, yes, yes. Um first of all, uh as you know, I started this talk because I wanted to motivate and inspire people that were all hit by this pandemic, the shutdown mm -hmm. and you know, I don't know if you caught the news over here. We are actually experiencing pretty much a second lockdown at this point. Yes. My country is the worst in Europe. We're being mm. blocked and banned and, and restricted everywhere. And Amsterdam is actually on code red right now. So I technically I can't leave the city, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I got to do something. So, uh, so I'm being, I'm being careful though, because I have a mother that I want to visit. And yes. so I don't want to take any chance. I can count on two hands, the people that I've associated myself with these past uh, two months, uh -huh. um, aside from me having to go to Italy uh, two weeks ago uh, for a wedding, which was a whole crazy business. The pictures were gorgeous, I must admit. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, and, and you know what? We we all chanced it, and we stuck to the mask because the restrictions in Italy are so much, much tighter than over here. So okay. they had it pretty good. 
um, and we were mostly outside. Um, yeah, so, my, 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 my wife, my wife, she has um, tons of family out there. She has family. Oh, you told me that, yeah. She has family in Greece and then, oh, excuse me, no, she has family in Rome and then she has right. family in Ponte Ladoff. That's like, okay. um, I think like South. Right. Well, yeah, I was in Rome and it was, it was really quiet. Normally Rome yeah. is like flooded with Poppin'. tourists and Poppin'. it's, yeah, it, it looked really nice. <laughs> we rushed through all the sites and took some pictures without tourists. Um, but yeah, so um, what has been the biggest effect on you, aside from you talking about, you know, you've lost people, what, what has been the biggest effect on your everyday life uh, during this pandemic? I mean, creatively, creatively wise, I mean, we were about, before New York locked down, we were in a process, um, Evil D and, and Mr. Wolf from Beat Miners, we all collectively are working on an album called um, Stifle and Creativity. So we all was working on that. And then I was in the process of releasing my whole album. And now, you know, I was gonna shoot videos and everything and right. it all set when in lockdown. So then like, and, and we had it, we caught it the worst. So literally you could not be on the streets. You had, you right. can go to work, come home and that's it. If you caught on the streets, they'll do they basically what's on something, oh, we'll lock you up. So, you know, like once again, myself and, and everyone else, man, who, who um, you know, you depend on, because your job is your job, whatever that job right. is. So if your job is going around the world performing, that's your source of income. Right. So a lot of people, yo, you lost money. And it's, and it's a shame, like so much money is lost and you're not getting back that money. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. evil D who goes out and DJs all over the place, <clears throat> now that money's not there. I mean, he's good. Thank God. You know, that's my brother. Right. And, he's, and he's and he's and he's dopey in a dope place and we're cranking out beats every day. But, you know, sources of income. But, you know, once yeah. again, like when those when those doors close, other doors open up. So well, you gotta <laughs> see the doors though, the other doors. Because a lot of people don't see it, which is why this talk is is helping people to see different perspectives and yeah. solutions. And my thing is like what I learned what I learned how to manipulate Instagram and all these other things is and this is what I'm telling every artist. You on the stream and you see someone with a DJ next to their name, yeah. I blind will hit a DJ in his face. Yo, I'm blah blah blah. Yeah. I got, can I send it to you? Ninety percent of the time they're gonna go, right. yeah. I send it to them and they pie back like, oh shit, this shit is dope. Right. Hey, and then, yo, you just keep pushing and keep pushing. That's like, what you did to me. And I didn't even have DJ next to my name. Like. I mean, yeah. you, 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 you're the person. Um, I have another person. I have another uh, one of my people. She's in Nottingham. You know, like, once again, you just yeah. see creativity. She's a, she's an artist. She paints. Right. You know, painting like, yo. And then she was doing something on YouTube. And I was like, yo. And she was like, yes, yeah, you know, we're taking artists and we're putting artists music behind me painting. So I hit her like, yo, I'm yo, I'm an artist. Yo, I was like, oh, I'm right. I, music behind your behind your thing. She's like, oh, well, you know, send me your music. So I sent her my music and then like three seconds later she was back like, oh my God, this is really dope. <laughs> that's what I and then, that's, and then, that was my reaction too. Full transparency. Um the person who's cutting this evil D from Black Moon, full transparency, my brother's positive from Dale I saw. Oh my God. It, but it's like Yo. Well, yeah, you know, and I didn't even know that because I asked, I mean, I had seen, I think I've seen the Mood Doctors before, like on somebody's, mm -hmm. you know, post, but I don't check who that was. So when I asked you, how did you find me? And you told me that Pops was your, your brother. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're yeah. the guy he's rapping about. <laughs> well, yes. Well, well, my name has been in. Um, Numerous I, songs. <laughs> I mean. God rest the dead, Fife, who, like, that's, like, the story behind Butter, Fudge, another person, another one of my people who passed away, who lived in Atlanta, Fudge, Fudge picked me up, we went, we went to Queens to go get Fife, and we, we rolled up the Battery Studios, that's, that's where, you know, Tribal Quest just always do all, all their records. Right. Walk in the studio, Tip is doing that beat. He didn't put, he didn't put the hook in yet, that, no, 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 that's not in yet. So we just listened to the beat. I'm like, yeah, this is fire. And if I was like, yeah, something like, yo, well, you know, um, I think it should be your solo joint. 
Now, there have been some rumors he was talking about fight on right rhymes. I'm like, I don't know what anyone's talking about. <clears throat> the only thing I know, for my eyes, <clears throat> Fife literally, because this is back in days when people would make tapes, so Bob right. found a tape for him. Fife went in the other room with the cassette tapes, and he started writing. He wrote the rhymes literally right there, and in about 20 minutes, half an hour later, Fife was like, yo, I'm ready. Fife went in there, spit, no mess ups, did verse, second verse, right. and then and then and then Tip like yo, I got something hooked. Tip put, puts the hook in, and then my people's Ami Dodd and Sahai, they are the girls mm-hmm. who go, oh, and let me five. They did that part. <clears throat> so yeah. I mean, these are the story. These are these stories are gold, man. I like, mean, let's, I'm I'm one hundred percent blessed. <clears throat> like I'm 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 blessed to have been around. All these legends. That, the most incredible people in the yeah. game to do it, and I'm and I'm and I'm blessed to have been have done beats for people who are incredible. I mean, yeah. people don't know. I tell a story about Platoon. Yeah. Platoon created basically. You got to realize this is before everyone had equipment, so people got to put a lot of things in perspective. Right, no and problem. you know what? For those who are tuned in. If you don't know your old school stuff, then you probably don't know what we're talking about right now. So, you know, well, I, just to clarify for people, we talking about some real hip hop legends that Luck has been fortunate to work with. And and I and I'll explain it to people, and I and I'll put it in this perspective. You didn't have this program called Pro Tools that was hundred dollars to buy equipment. Yo, you to buy equipment. You have to buy actual. Equipment. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. You ought to have. You had to order have someone who sold drugs, who gave you money. I'm just right. Who gave you money to get your equipment game up, or you know you you stack your chips, or you made use of whatever you had. What did you use? Give me give me the the, the equipment so that my, you used making those those beats for these people. We so we had a normal. You had a you had a you had a record player. And a record player had a connection with a cassette tape. Right, right. So basically, even like with me, when I used to go in the studio to, to do beats, I first would pre-production the beat at the crib. So I would take the record, unpause the tape, let the tape play, bring the record back. And I, yo, and, like, and believe it or not, yo, you would catch it. Right. That's how you would know, oh, I can loop this beat. Right, right. So if you can loop the beat at home, you wouldn't bother you wasting your time going to the studio because yo, I, if I can't catch it at home, I'm not gonna bother wasting my time going to the studio. So just so. and just just the uh, I don't mean to cut you off, mm-hmm. but I want I don't want to talk too much about technical stuff. But for me, this is the important part to to make people understand that you know nowadays you can just send beats back and forth over the internet and and work with with certain people that you may admire or respect. Mm-hmm. So for for luck back then. You know, for working with these people, it took a lot more to produce something other than just you know sitting behind your computer and sending it out. And let me and let me and let me phrase it even further like this: <clears throat> A couple of days ago, I was talking to this kid called Joshua he's from South Africa. Because right now, I'm like I'm blasting, I'm promoting like all over the, all over the world. So yeah, I think it's being in all the places and people where I'm chatting here. So simply, this is what I'm saying: <clears throat> Don't ever get in your mind that. I have his Casio keyboard and I can't do something. Right. Figure, figure it out. Right. Clearly, if you really take the time to figure out things, you can figure out how to do amazing. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. Correct. With absolutely no equipment. Right. So allow, don't allow, oh, I don't have this amount of money to get in your way of, of ultimately achieving your goal. Yeah. And, and, and using your talents. So Correct. do you consider yourself more a producer or a rapper or a writer? Um, well, I, we, we started off, me, me, and my, me and my production partner, we started off producing first. Right. Um, I started freestyling, to be honest with you. Didn't really have no wanting to rhyme. I remember, I, remember, I remember rhyming in front of my brother like one time, said, said something that I 100% is real corny. He's like, ah, you know, stick to the beat, stick to the beat, stick to the beat. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> we stuck to the beats, and yo, we did kept that motivate it. you to be like, listen, man, I can rhyme just like you. Nah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and we but we kept freestyling and freestyling, and then like the beats that the beats we're making, I mean, the beats now that people are listening to now to today, like we came out with a beat off of my single previously I dropped off the awakening called um never okay no um never sleep we're using a nasa the beat is literally I'm not gonna lie to you the beat is six years old seven seven six years old but you can't tell so that's when me and him started coming like yo i know i got dope beats so out of out of people not taking our beats yo we started rhyming over our own beats <clears throat> And well, you know, that. honestly, you you guys, you know, um, when I first heard the songs, it's timeless. Like that real grimy street hip hop, so mm -hmm. to say, it's timeless. You can play that at any time in any era or in any situation. To me, that's the timeless stuff. Like we still we still rock to the the De La Souls and the Tribe Called Quest and the Eric B's and Rakim's today. It's well, this timeless. is this is what I would say to everyone. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be Bob Marley? <clears throat> that I played that for my four-year-old son for the first time in his life, and he started rocking to it? Or you want to be someone who's in and out? Yeah, you want to be the Bob train. Marley. Yeah. You play Bob Marley for any person on this globe, yeah. people move to it. If someone says they like Bob Marley, you punch them in the face. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my thing. Yeah, I would rather be my 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 goal and how I always write in general is I write for timeless. I don't I don't try to use too much current slang. Right. If you hear it, you don't know when it's you don't know when this was made. Right. And then I got something. I figured out my rhyme style over a weekend. When I rhyme, I don't really I don't rhyme where I go. Well, I end the word off with cat. The next word is bat. My rhyme styles, I'm talking to you. Right. Like my reflection may may drop at the same point in time, but I don't really rhyme words together. Like I is a, if you listen to a lot of my rhymes, I'm talking. If you, li if you listen to pain, I'm not really yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's the I mean, that's the whole message, man. That's like it's just but but originally rapping, rhyming is talking over beats. It's Correct. it's Correct. giving a message out, it's telling your story. Correct. It's, it's straight up storytelling and that's what you do. Um, and I think you, well, honestly, Evil D is just, you know, it's a, it's a perfect person to match up with. Uh, well, I, 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 I can't get Evil, evil proud to that beat. <laughs> my, the cuts, the cuts. My, um, my, um, my, per, um, or so <laughs> me, Evil, and um, Brian, that's my engineer. We all have, a, we all have um, a mixing company called The Brand. Brian did that beat. <clears throat> And once again, like, so for me, I'm very organic. <clears throat> Brian sends me the beat, the paint. <clears throat> I hear the beat. I'm like, yo, this is, this is insane. Yeah. So the, the hook part comes in, and then I start going, hey, hey, hey. So I start coming with us. And then you just start, and then you start putting together. Oh, and so you go, oh it, it ain't pain free. And you start putting words together. Right. So... <clears throat> The, when the go word really was a way for me to know where the rhymes. So when I was on my equipment, I said, go. So I know well, I'm a rhyme after go. Right, right. But after I wrote, wrote the rhymes, I'm like, hey, you know, that, that kind of works. So I'll keep it. So do you and do, this, do, you and this do one a thing lot of I productions? Say, this, huh? Do you do a lot of the productions for the, for the project? Um, we do a bulk of it. My, right. Like I did, um... I I personally did the beat um Pigeons in the Park. Okay, yeah. So we do beats, Evil do beats, my um my engineer does beats. Yeah, I um, just work together as a team. Yeah, my, yeah. my thing is y'all listen, sir all jokes aside, if it's hot, it's hot. Right. Exactly. I don't, I, don't I, I I never I mean I I I do know how to pick beats and 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 one thing I will give my crew, we know how to make songs. Right. Like, um, we got a song, we got a song called Money on, um, on Beat Miners. So Beat Miners, we got an album probably right. dropping together, probably I would say next year. Um, and just once again, like, he did the beat. The beat is, I mean, some hard, bent, 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 bent,
And I heard the beat. I was like, oh, we need money, money. And then I saw right. money. And I go, we need money. And then how I test all my beats out, if, if my son can sing them, then I know Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Before okay, you overtake so your beats, I you know your beats out. I want to steer away a little bit about the, the details of the, making the songs mm -hmm. and stuff, because um, I want to go back to a more general, more general information that people would want to hear. Yes. Um, so, you know, you having worked with a lot of names in the industry, uh, when did you feel like, hey, this is something that I want to keep doing? What was for you the turning point? I mean, aside from, you know, having seen your brother being successful, um, what what made you feel like, okay, this is something I want to do as well? My turning point for me was um, we put out an album called General Medicine on our own in 2003. We put it out, so for all the artists who, who are looking to get your stuff out there, we, we rock with a company called CD Baby. And CD Baby basically It's just the distributor, yeah. So it's just, you know, I'm just giving like, because once again, I was talking to another kid and yeah, you, know, you want to get your stuff out there. These are ways you can do it, but you gotta yeah. be you gotta be also willing to invest in yourself. Right. So we was performing at the spot in Manhattan called New Eureka Cafe. Yeah. Oh, like we ripped it, and and like when I did a little James Brown one song, I fell to the ground, and the crowd was like, "Ooh!" And, and when you start hearing the crowd interact with what you're doing, you're like. Yeah, I'm doing something right. Yeah, and we got and we got a song where where it comes on and and, and it's like the rain or something. And we and we had umbrellas for, for the concept of, of of the show. We put the umbrellas on and then when the beat and everyone was rocking with it, and I was like, "Yo, <clears throat> once you start feeling that energy, you know what's up." Yeah, and to be honest with you, like everyone who was hearing it, DJ wise. Yo, everyone kept coming back, coming back the same thing. Right. Yo, doing it. Yo, it's it's dope. So and that you know, was for you. That was for you the point where you're like, I'm gonna keep doing this because this is really do I'm doing something good. Yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, later on when, later on when when your peers, you know, your 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 brother's like, yo, that's dope. Or you know, Evil D is like, yo, that's dope. Yeah. Or, Oh, Mr. Walt, yo, that's dope. Or Eclipse, you know, right. like, yo, that's dope. These are certified people, one hundred percent. When yeah. you perform, when you perform in that rock steady, yeah, and you see people moving to your, to to what you're doing, and then people who cool, people who are down on rock steady are coming to you like, yo, son, keep doing your yeah. thing. No, you keep doing your thing. You're going to have wins. You're going to have losses. Yeah. That's life. Talking about but, wins but she, and losses, um, what well, do you think? I would say a loss is keeping it real. You you, you always want to be further than where you are. That's even to, every day you want to do that. But, you know, I realize, I realize the artist that I am. I'm not an artist using trap music. Yo, shout out to Bam. I'm not an artist using um. I'm not an artist using trap music. Yo, and um, sidebar. If you if Bam, my my dude who I knew from ages, cop his joint. Bam is dope. Anyway, <laughs> yo, oh, that's nice. <laughs> you not you you have to you have to realize if you're not doing what everyone's doing, it's gonna be hard. This is yeah. what. It is. So I realize I realize what I'm doing. But I know eventually what I'm doing will explode because now as everyone's coming back to all our older stuff and, and then, you know, and everything goes in cycles, man. That's what people got to realize. Right. And when everyone now was hearing our stuff, it's, it's the same thing as you said, hey. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> and and, and it, my business partner said the same thing when I send it to him, you know, for our, you know, mm -hmm. collaboration. He was like, oh, my God, this shit is so dope. Like, I swear everyone, because, you know, I told you already. Okay, so mm -hmm. for the people that are tuned in, uh, Lex sent me the song, and I was I was on the couch. I was like, you know, I get songs all the time from people. I wasn't really trying to listen to songs, but I was like, oh, let, me, let me just try this. And I, I put, because you, you sent Pain, um, the, mm -hmm. that was the first song. So I, I listened to it, 
And I just instantly just set up and I got hyped and I was like, oh my God, this shit is so dope. And I got back to you instantly. I didn't even see the rest of the emails <laughs> yet. So that, and that's a, that's an honest, genuine reaction from a hip hop lover. It's, it's confidence in, it's confidence in your product. Yeah. Like, I have confidence in my thing, so I don't... I, I, well, you I, sent it to the right person, too, because I don't know if other people may like it, but I'm a person that was craving that type of stuff in between mm -hmm. all the, I don't want to say trash I'm getting, but there's a lot of the same stuff that I'm Look, getting. I said this something refreshing. I sent our first single out to Eclipse, and Eclipse is my dude, and, and what I love about Eclipse is I love people who are honest. Yeah. It's like, ah, I'm not really feeling that. I'm like, man, you bug it out, man. You said the songs in order of how I like them. You said three songs. I like number one the best, then number two was all right, and then number three was like, ah, you know, it's still good, but, but it didn't give me see, the same reaction as the first but one. I'm, I, I'll challenge you on numbers because to me, never, never to me is dope because what I'm kindly saying in never is kind of what's going on. And, I, and and the second half of never, I'm explaining to you who move doctors are. Yeah, but you have to understand, you know, I'm not, first of all, I'm not English. I'm a and Dutch native. So when I listen to new songs or when I hear songs for the first time, my, my first instinct goes to the beat, the melody. Oh, the correct. Harmonies. I don't listen to the text. And I say, say that to people, if I'm not mm -hmm. feeling the song, mm -hmm. then I'm not going to play it again to listen to the text. I may because I, you know, because it's somebody I know. But if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling the beat, like, and, and just, you know, that, that'll grab me, that'll reel me in. I'm going to play it a few more times and then I start listening to the song. But this is, but, but this is, but let me loop it real, real quickly, real talk. <laughs> Tropical Quest, no matter how dope that first album is, <clears throat> and me personally, I like the first album the best because I really feel at the end of the day, that's tip. That's tip. Right, right. That's that is most creative. Yeah. People didn't like that album. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But 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 that's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's personal too, yeah. No, but this is what I try to always, this is one conversation I always have with people. That's hip hop. Yeah. Hip hop was never about everyone had to like it. And if you didn't like right. it, you're a hater. No, I have my own opinion. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge that one. That's not hip hop. That's art. Art that you put out is for everybody's interpretation, and you but, can only right. like as an artist. You can only hope that people can mm -hmm. relate to your art. But, but, but not but, everyone is gonna do that. But 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 it's not a challenge because hip hop was art. <laughs> but there's a point. This is not only hip hop. It's yes. art in general. That's Correct. What I mean, yeah. Correct. Yeah. But that's my thing. It's like where where did we all lose where? <laughs> Yo, if 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 Lock if doesn't, don't like this, it, yeah. he's a hater. Right. Man, I, I, and it's I, opinion. My it's opinion. taste. And my thing is, my mother raised me with enough self-confidence that I know everybody going to like what I do. Right. Good. But my thing is just have an opinion about it. If you like, yo, I just don't feel it. Yo, what up, indeed? If you like, yo, I, I didn't feel it because of this. Yo, and um, someone just popped on and D was, was on one of uh, my brother Bionic's albums. Salute, salute, salute. Oh, nice. Yeah, but you're right. It's, it's, and, and for me, it's like if you're making things just to please the masses, the soul and the passion out of your art is gone. You can tell, you can listen to ah, well, songs. You can I'm, listen I'm, to songs that, that, I'm, that are not passionate, that are just. I'm going to disagree trend. with that because you, cause you know why? I, hey, Diddy, Diddy's making songs for the masses, kid, but. <laughs> You throw me on some maze, I get out there and shake my damn ass. <laughs> that that's the best, but that's not that, the point, that though. Boom. That's not the point I'm saying. Like, there's songs that you that you listen to the club, yeah, yeah. in the club, but and there's songs that are that have a message. But again, if you are only trying to please everyone, yes, and not making what you genuinely feel, yes, then that to me is not genuine art. That's just you riding the wave of wanting to make money or fame or whatever it is. And I can I can tell if I listen to an artist I can tell if it's a gimmick or mm -hmm. you know or if it's real. And even if you choose to be a gimmick, that's actually realer than trying to be a gimmick. Correct. So that to me, I mean, I've listened to enough music and I've I've worked for a radio station, so I had to like go to piles and piles of MP3s back in the day just to mm -hmm. to figure out what to play. And quality music is not necessarily music that I would like to play, but I can tell that it's real. You know. I mean, 
it's, it's, it's what you said. I mean, my my love of the internet comes this way. My people in Bethford name is Leader Flavor. And this is what I love about the internet. I'm able to reach you just off the whim. Yeah. And and this is what this is what I'm just trying to just, just explain to everyone. This is the power of the internet, and this is how you should use the internet, yo. You can plug in with so many different people, yo. You can you can my my my, my music. I like has, how you just keep saying plug. <laughs> I, my music has literally been playing in Bedford over where y'all at. Right. Yes. Constant. And that's over the internet. Yeah. It's like yeah. Internet really made it easier to connect and to to spread yeah. your music. We're not okay. That brings me to the next um, subject. Really, I had a, a really great talk with Eric Sermon last week. For yes. those who didn't see it, please uh, go to my IGTV. So yes. you know the whole conversation, especially during this pandemic with everything being shut down. Mm -hmm. Being independent has so many more options than back in the day. Back in the day, you had to get signed in order to get your music out there, Correct. reach the masses, or radio. That's not necessary anymore. We, we, you and I both have lived the era of change in, mm -hmm. you know, going from analog to digital. Mm -hmm. And so where do you stand on independent artists right now? Because there's still a mindset of, oh, I have to get signed to a label. And then I made it, not knowing that you may get shelved for a couple of years or get, you know, eaten <laughs> alive by, by, the, by the label and being in debt for the rest of your life. I mean, listen, man, it ain't, it ain't, I'm a, if I'm keeping it 100 with you, it ain't for the faint of hearts. Exactly. This whole industry is it, no matter if you're an artist or not. Listen, there there are a lot of people right now who are mega. I, I'm not going to blow anyone's name up. <laughs> but they had seed money. Yeah. And I ain't going to go into what seed money is. But everyone who knows what it is, knows what seed money is. Look it up, people. And once Look again, up. I ain't a hater on however you do it. <clears throat> But there's people who have C money, and it's right. people like me, yo, who you grind. So every yeah, you grind, step, you hustle. You every hit. step you took, yo, you took and you conquered and you made and you built and you built. Right. Yo, you gotta be willing to grind. And what I'm just simply trying to say to people, yo, if I can go out and buy seven hundred pair, seven hundred pair of dollars of Jordans, but I can't put that money back into into my yeah. brand. Oh yeah. Then what are you talking about? And let's keep it real. In the most easiest era ever, <clears throat> because yes, I don't I mean agree. the back in the day thing, but when I used to go to the studio, yo, we had our crew, and we all put our money together. Yo, what up, Sarah in Arizona? What up? What up? Um, shout out to Arizona. <laughs> and my thing, and I see a lot of my people's in there too. Shout out to everybody. Everybody <laughs> tuned in. <laughs> and my thing is like, yo. You put your money together, and then, yo, yo, we're going to go in the studio on this thing. <clears throat> and people got to realize, dude, we was going in the studio for eight-hour blocks from 12 from twelve a.m. to 8 a.m. Right. And, yo, let me tell you right now, we did four songs. We laid four songs, four beats, and we did rhymes, hooks, and everything. Right. And so, they go straight back to work, to the grind. Yeah. But that's what I'm trying to say to you. Like, yo, it's, it's mon it's, you're, you're managing your money. Yeah. And and with 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 any any artist who who knows what it. Hey, what happened? Sound is off. Oh, oh, oh my part my my partner just called me. <laughs> he Yo. ain't in here. He don't know you got a lot. <laughs> Boom! Yo, it's a, fail. <laughs> it's a grind, man. I'm just yeah. I'm just honestly saying, man. From any dancer to. Any creative person, anybody who wants to build a business, yeah. doesn't even matter if it's creative business. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing that, you know, let me give you an example. Uh, people always saw me flying the whole year round. Okay, pandemic mm -hmm. put me on lockdown, but I used to fly every month, every two months and going all over the world. And people thought I was rich. Mm -hmm. Now, I live very minimalistic. I live in a very small place in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. I don't buy many clothes. I don't, I don't do a lot. I just eat and I travel. So... They thought you needed a lot of money to travel. And I'm like, well, you go to the club every weekend. You spend two, three, four hundred dollars. Oh, then you buy all these these expensive shoes and everything. Uh, four hundred dollars is a ticket to somewhere. <laughs> so it's just your perspective or, you know, getting a house and a mortgage or two cars. Um, you know, I, yeah, I got sneakers, but, you know, I always got good deals. And stuff, me, but it's just what your priorities are. 
and let me keep it 100 with you. Like, shout out to all my people in Tampa and um, old, old Dirty Sundays. And when, when my when my people's crazy bizarro, you know, he was throwing, he, you know, he has a festival that he throws every year down there. Dude, I'm in the first class. Yo, you go to cheaptickets.com. <laughs> exactly. You get your you, deals. You get you, your, you, your, your you, hustle on you, with that. Right? You wait for the last minute. Upgrade it. Upgrade it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upgrade. Of the business class, so you, so you get not some even, not even. You know what? I go from A to B. I don't have to be doing shit in the plane. You know, I'll Man. keep that money. Only thing I'm trying to explain to people: you got to put your mind to it, and you got to do it. Shout out to my people, some um, old old school crates. He's not person who, who 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 did my yo. Real quick, shout out to all my people in here, yo, who gave me the the paint the paint free signs. Yo, salute, much love, and I, and and I'm so happy that everyone came with me on this journey. Within within two weeks, I was able to get 81, right. 81 pictures. Yo, I'm sorry, Pam. I didn't know you uh, like uh, two weeks earlier because I would have had you, but that's okay. I'll, <laughs> hey, I'm in. You know, I'm doing stuff with you, so. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just joking with you, girl. But I'm just saying, man. And once again, it's 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 the love of the internet, man. Yo, we all yeah. got. Support each other, support each other. What everyone's doing, man. Yo, and eventually, yeah. yo. Okay, so there's some questions. Uh, oh. Well, there's one question. Yeah, people, if you have, <laughs> oh my god. Okay, uh, never mind. Um, somebody left a stupid comment. That's uh, so if you do have questions, feel free to put them in the question box, and I'll get to them. No, I want to ask hold, you. Hold, hold on, no, no comments. Stupid. Say what? What was the comment? Somebody asked what how much for an ounce? How much for an ounce? I don't even know what ounce. Um Well, I, I have people who did it, but it depends on what it depends on what you're talking about. That's my point. I, I understand I mean it's the, not the, relevant to the conversation. I don't the, wanna to be oh. the reason why I don't get into these comments is because if I do then everybody's gonna leave stupid comments and that's a, that's a waste of my time and I'm not here for that. This this is not what this this interview is about and this talk is about. Um, I shut that shit down quick. Uh, no trolling in my in my interviews. Um, you've been in this game for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, what do you consider your biggest mistake, which turned out to be your biggest lesson? Um, you gotta you. My people from my people from VA always says to me, um, when iron is hot. You got to strike. Yeah. Now, sometimes it's hard to see what that is in the circumstances of, you know, what it is. And sometimes it just depends on where you are in your life. Yeah. Um, I would say there was a time where I could have been my brother's tour manager. Right. I wish I would have did it, but... The flip side of all that always is, if I would have done that, I would not be who I am now. Right. So, ultimately, something you didn't do just shifts you in a different place. Right. Shout out to Dave. I see Dave in here. I haven't Ooh. talked to him in so long. Dave who? Dave West. Oh, Dave oh, West. Oh, my gosh. Day I haven't talked to him so long. Good to see you, Yo, man. Day West did a beat a couple of days ago. Son, that was fire. <laughs> Dave, don't hold out on us. Come on now. You know you've been the man since oh, day one. Um, but once again, like this is what I'm trying to say. If if I would have did what I did, I would have met Day West. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's what I mean with a mistake and being the biggest lesson. But I, what I also mean... The reason why I ask my guests about their mistakes is because other people can learn from it. Like, you know, I've had people saying, well, I signed a contract without reading. There are people that said, I trusted my friend who, who was just out for the fan. There's all kinds of things that you learn, all kinds of experiences that, that are mistakes, but ultimately make you a better business person in this industry. I'm just going to say for me, I don't... People use the question box. I'm not reading things off. In the middle of the conversation, I've, so use the question box. I get to it. I'm, 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 I'm really blessed. I'm blessed in the sense that 
like who my brother is. Right. I was. How did that I help seen you? What Africa, I seen what Africa them been through. Because I seen them with the deal in G Street and when they went to G Street and when they jumped to Warner. So, and I seen yeah. what, I seen what Q-Tip and them into. Yeah. For me. You learned like, from that. Yeah. I mean, I, I if I would answer a question, my question, I would answer a question. I have certain wishes. Like, like I wish Chia Lee's father God rest the dead, Chris Lighty didn't go in yeah. to Chris Lighty's office and ask for a million dollars <laughs> because my production team, the song we did, the beat we did, was going to be his first single. Wow. So, and we beat out, we beat out Beat Nuts. We beat out Diamond D. Like, I'm telling you right now, it was heavy hitters on his album. We literally crushed everyone. And Chris Lighty was like, this is his first single. Me and my production partner, we like, yes! Yeah, yeah, yes! yeah. Yes! And then his father goes in, I want a million dollars for my son. I want Naughty by Nature money. Well, <laughs> I'm not saying you can't get Naughty by Nature money, but your son at this particular time and moment is not Naughty by Nature right. caliber yet. Right. And yet being the question. I'm not saying he won't eventually get Be there. that level, yeah. <clears throat> you know, and, and one of the most proudest moments for me is definitely is... um. Doing trying people for my brother, right? We did I the, love that song. I love the, that song. We did the beat in Queens, um, and and my production partner, me like my other production partner. So real quick, my my production partner, who I did the beat at his crib, he is a tutelage of Lost Professor. <clears throat> so okay. he came up with Lost Lost Cross. <clears throat> so me and how we doing the beat? So I do you know trying and loop it up, loop it up. My other person partner comes in. He plays the bass line. <clears throat> so they're like, yo, we should get it to brother. I said, oh, he's taking this. Trust me. So my brother partner drops me off. I go in the house. I go in the crib. I walk into the room. I say, yo, come downstairs. I got a beat for you. He goes, what? I said, trust me. You're going to take this beat. He goes, what? I said, yo, come downstairs now. You're <laughs> going to take this beat. Put, the, <laughs> and, you know, put, I, put, I put the cassette tape in. We played it. Came on. He was like, ooh. Okay. He could he could not say no. But he my dopest one. my dopest moment was and we was at the roots um picnic mm -hmm. and they played it. Oh wow. But I've never I never seen them perform it. So I never got right. to see how people interact with it. And I was looking at this that one this one white kid and yo, he was just like zoned out and I was like Yo, I guess I did my thing. And that's what I was like. But it's a really it. great song. I think it's one of the songs that I probably played the most. And, well, you know, they have, like, so many albums, and I've played so many of the stuff. But I have my favorites, and that definitely is one of them. And so to know that you, you know, were part of that is pretty dope. Like, well, years I, later, you know? We're talking years later. Like That's, for a, me. that's the other sidebar to my sidebar is... <laughs> Me and my production partner did a song for my homegirl Amber Sunshower, Blue Skies Butterflies. <clears throat> and and then like later on, like I was run up with the people and people go, yo, I love Amber. And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Yo, yeah. and they go, yo, you know what my shit was? I'm like, what was your shit? Blue Skies Butterflies. I'm like, yo, you know I did that song. <laughs> That's dope. But that's that's actually all the credit that you or all the acknowledgement that you need. Ah, sometimes. <laughs> well, I mean. No, no. Only, only, only reason why I say sometimes because, once again, here was this. There was a situation where that song was about to be the the lead single. Right. But you know, sometimes things just don't go the way. Most of the times in this industry, that's why you gotta wait. You gotta be patient, and you know. <laughs> Oh. All of that. Um, there's a couple more questions. Let me see. Uh, what is one of your wildest moments you remember at an after party? Oh my my! I don't have I don't have I don't have after party moment. My wildest moment. <laughs> you didn't have wild moments. <laughs> my wildest moment you ever. Home after was the party. I hopped on tour with my brother in Virginia, and I've been on tour with your brother too. And and Q Tip was outside, outside of the um outside of of the hotel 
It was five girls, and five girls started doing the running man, and Q-tips like this, orchestrating the whole running man. I, I was like, I looked That's at my hilarious. brother, it was like, this is what Tor likes about. He goes, every day, all day. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what is the craziest thing, wildest moment that I've experienced while, you know, being on the few um, shows with your brother? I think the craziest thing must have been London, where the after party had like pole, stripper poles and stuff in the in the VIP, and it was just and uh, you know uh, a certain person always has his patron, and uh, things just went crazy, and I'm just sitting there like I'm I was so fresh, I'm sitting there like watching go, the whole thing go down. It can go south quick. <laughs> it, it was funny though, like you know those are the stories that I don't you know go into detail with because that's just backstage stories, but <laughs> yeah. Um, wh who are some of the people that you were really inspired by, or are you still inspired by? <laughs> I I could honestly say uh, <clears throat> Africa was one of <clears throat> I'll tell a quick story. So Tribe Vibes, the song on their second album, Done by the Forces of Nature, <clears throat> the song Tribe Vibes that comes on with the orchestra, <clears throat> that was the one song that I could honestly say in my life I heard and I was like, yo, I'm bullshitting on my production. <clears throat> we we walk in the studio. <clears throat> So we walk in the studio, I'm with my brother, we walk in the studio, Africa's there, and then Africa, he sees my brother, so you know, this, this is when everyone showed off. Right. So we, we walk with my brother, so the Africa purposely goes back to the front of the table. Mike G's in the booth, vocal booth about to do his vocals. So Africa goes to the front of the song, hits play. And you know how that song comes on. Yeah. Yo, when that shit dropped, I was like, holy shit. I was like, I have never in my life heard anything like that. So I would honestly say, like, Africa for me will always hold a part. The number one spot. Because it was like, if you really go, I mean, I don't got time to go into, if you just Google kind of however they constructed their first album. Right. And you really, if you find out how they did that first album, which is insane inside itself, you would know why Africa is probably top five hands down, one of the dopest right. producers in this rap. So how, how much, how much can I, uh, or can you credit to your brother um, for being, for you being in this, in this industry now? It's everything. Everything. I mean, look, I mean, everything. This, 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 listen, <clears throat> there's never no front. <clears throat> I remember, I think Ali said it in the interview and he said it best. <clears throat> when they got in the game, it opened up doors. It showed you that is real. Yeah. That is sustainable. You know, but what people got to, what one thing you got to realize is it's work. Yeah. Like, me being on tour with my brother, you know, what people don't know is you're going from North, you're going from New York now to South Carolina where it's 90 degrees. Right. Back where it's cold. Right. You ain't seen your family for four months. Right. So I seen the good and the bad, but it's all opened my mind to, yo, this is real. It's work. It's a yeah. tip. And I mean, it's, it's, it's dope. And I mean, like I said, yo, seeing tip being around RIP, yo, fights. Yeah. Like, I these are like 100 as well. So these are 100% yeah. my people's man. And it's like, it's work. I I I just, I I always wish that someone would really just do a deep dive into a tour on on YouTube to let people know like it no, was but there's I mean there's 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 you know documentaries and stuff about that. But I I always say the same thing. Like I've been on tour with a couple of people, uh, including your brother, and that that shit was not like everybody's like oh my god you're going on tour with you know De La Soul and I'm like well it's really not going on tour with them. It's yeah. just me sitting there just seeing all that shit happen. It's like running around and then me having managed uh, a couple of artists and being mm -hmm. on tour with them. It's just work, man. You get no rest. Yeah. So if, if you're not working on the tour and you're like a, a visitor on the tour, then it's really not fun other than admiring what's going on cool. and respecting the artists yeah. that you're around. But it's work. Yeah. It's work. 
And if you're independent, it's more work. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Trust me, me as a manager from independent artists, oh, oh my God, I was not just a manager. I'm the secretary. I'm the I'm the sound man sometimes. I'm the I'm the whatever. I'm the the, the promoter. I'm the mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the mother. I'm everyone. Um, and I've even been the the freaking DJ at one point. So yeah, huh? there's there's all kinds of jobs that comes to you know helping independent artists, but it's okay. You know, we do it for the love. Yes, yes. Um, so who are some of the people that you still want to work with? Who are on your bucket list? Because I'm, I'm big on speaking things into existence. So if there are any people that you still want to work with, let's speak it into existence. Um, like I said, well, I'm, I, I, I aim high. No, I, go ahead. Aim for the I, stars. I, my favorite would be Sade. Oh, that's awesome. That would be a dope collaboration. Like, I just... She's the most timeless artist who could drop anytime yes. and explode. And she looks um, like she don't age either. <laughs> exactly. She, you know, she, she, <laughs> she's like, just like her music. She just doesn't age. Um, and I mean, like, yo, a lot of Kendrick is dope. I think he's dope. Um, I would love, I, I'm not going to run. I would love to work with DJ Quick. Oh, Quick is dope. I think, I think DJ Quick is is a is an unsung hero. People yeah. don't really, really realize uh, we, everything we, he did. In, we in think school. of him, but uh, and I'm I'm sorry. I gotta shout out my boy B Jazz. He's like B Jazz. He's he's a dope artist as well. I've met him a couple times on tour out here, and yeah, he's dope. So, um, like I said, man. I mean, y'all, I'm gonna be honest. You're open to work with people that send you stuff. No, you know what? I'm open to work with people like this. Shorty and Liquid and Amber. Come and, on now. If there are and, people now watching that want to work with you, can they send you things and, and, you know, you can listen to it. I'm not saying you have to work with them, but. No, 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 no. This is what I'm trying to say to you. Because this is what I feel you should model yourself around. I want to work with people who are serious. Shorty will literally come in. Shorty will literally come in and, and spit a verse at one time and, and, and knock, I knock it out. Liquid right. will. Lick will literally come in, and, and Lick was verse for Pigeons. I think she did yeah, it. that shit was dope. I think she did it twice. That shit was so dope. I told you that, too. Second, she came in. She, she, she busted that verse out in at least 20 minutes. <clears throat> so my thing is, is respect people's times. Yeah. Come prepared. And just be serious. Because I'm going to be honest with you. If you a serious artist... I don't really care who you are. I'm down. Right. Right. I mean, Sade, I would love to work with, but I'm not, I just really want to, I always want to work with people who are serious. I want to work yeah. with people who on their game. You're on your game. And you know what yeah. I'm trying to say? out to you. And that's, Thank you. And that's where you want to align yourself. <laughs> Man, we about to make some waves. You, you and me, we about Let's to make go. some waves. <laughs> I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it's going to be exciting going to be exciting um i'm going to come to the end of this time for this talk uh there's a few uh more questions that i'm going to go through mm -hmm. um one more would you rather have had uh would you rather have the fame or have had a normal life i mean i don't even know if that question really applies to you because you kind of are in between i would say i am i am i am the most known person who's not known yeah <laughs> That's a good one. Like, I, I, we about to work on another another project. I got a project called the Lost Journals. You got and a few more minutes. <laughs> inside the Lost Journals, I talk about. I'm using my name throughout my throughout the project. So it's just like real quick how I met Butterfly and Butterfly is like, oh my God, it's Lux from Diggle Planet. It's like, right? I love people him. Know I me, but, him too. He's so great. But people know me, but you don't know me. But when it's like, oh, you're luck. Oh, my God, you're luck. Oh, my God. It's That's like, what I said. Like, oh, you're the guy that, you know, I know from the songs. <laughs> But that's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind that because that's fame without getting the harassment of fame Correct. or the stalking of fame. Correct. But it'll, you'll, you'll get famous with all the stuff that you're putting out now. Um, is there anything that you want to say, an advice, a life motto that you want to give out to people that are watching or are going to watch this? Yo, it's simple, man. Best of yourself. That's, 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 this. that's the only thing I can honestly say. 
everyone who I shouted out through the streams, yo, they invest in yourself. The girl, the the the, the chicks, uh, the lady Sarah, she got a dance studio. Yo, invest in yourself. No one, no one's gonna invest in you, especially now. Right. No one's gonna invest in you if you are not willing to invest in yourself. Right. And the nobody's gonna work for you if you're not willing to work for yourself. The 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 days of people the the yo, the days of Jay Z's car breaking down in front of your house and catching a flat tire and him walking out and saying yo I gotta use a I gotta use your phone <laughs> oh you're a, you're an artist oh you're dope those days are over those we never even had those <laughs> and that's what I'm saying yo if you ain't gonna invest in yourself if you and if you ain't gonna invest in yourself how you expect anyone gonna invest in yeah. You? And if I, you don't I want it yourself, agree with that. And if you don't want it yourself, you can't expect someone else to want it more than you. Yeah, you can't expect people to run for you if you're not running for yourself. And get your priorities straight, like you said. You know, uh, if you can spend seven hundred dollars on on a pair of sneakers, and, and but you're complaining about you not having money to record, or you want right. to, you know, get beats for free. Nah, man, take that elsewhere and and adjust your attitude and your mindset because that's not right. going to work. Um, I want to thank you for this conversation. I want to thank you for being a guest and, and sharing some of the great stories. Mm -hmm. um, I actually am writing a book, so some of the things will be coming back in the book. I will um, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, not stories that you and I have from the past, but we may make some new stories together in this industry. Um, yeah, thank you so much and stay healthy. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody cop the new single, a life soundtrack pain pain free um go check it out mood doctors um it's dope if you love hip-hop then this then you need this in your life you really do and um, share 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 yeah sharing is caring. cop by and, share cop by share right a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend tell a friend to tell a friend and, and blast it in your car blast it in your house since we all got to stay inside open mm -hmm. your windows blast it out um, yeah, and, and stay tuned for more conversations. This one will be uh, on my IGTV as the other ones. Um, you know, I had a whole bunch of dope people, and I'm, I'm just thankful that you wanted to be part of that lineup. She had Malik Yoba. What? Oh, I had Malik like two times. <laughs> Malik is my homeboy. No one, you had him. I don't care. I don't yeah, get Malik. the ones. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I need Malik. your brother, but I don't know if he wants to do these things. So I want to talk you to had you. Malik Yoba. <laughs> Malik, Malik Yoba is dope. I, I'm not saying not. I'm just saying. Who am I? He sings too. <laughs> I, I got his album. <laughs> you didn't even know that, huh? She's large. I'm telling you. Don't don't let, don't don't sleep on us. And she <laughs> had one of my and she had one of my heroes last, last Tuesday, Eric Sherman. Eric Sherman, yeah. man, yeah, that was a that was one of the dopest conversations. A lot of knowledge. Um, as you can see, I got your peoples in the back here. Yes, no doubt. Um, it's been, and I had the, the person that made this, Mike Thompson, I had him in a conversation too. He's okay. an artist. So, yeah. Um, anyway, I got to wrap this up. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch. Send me the information that I'm still missing from you so we can uh, keep going. Oh, all right. You, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have my two. No, no, you have my all two. All right, cool. All right. I'll talk to you <laughs> later. Stay safe. Peace, and, everyone uh, in the world. Peace, peace, peace. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Peace. 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 All right, people, I'll be back next Monday with the amazing Torre. And, um, oh, wait, it is Monday. I still got somebody else. I got Free the Robots this, um, this Wednesday. And the next week, I got Torre. So, uh, and I got a whole bunch of other people lined up. And hopefully, uh, Plug One will be part of this as well. So, I'm just going to keep going. Um, and if you have suggestions for guests, send them on. Everybody stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and keep bumping that music. I'll see you guys. Um, yeah, Evil D, I might have to get you too. And I know you don't remember me having met you in New York, but um, I did at a couple of parties. Um, and probably one where I was with Paz as well. Uh, anyway, a long time ago. Um, yeah, stay tuned. I got more dope people coming up. And uh, yeah, I hope to see everybody healthy back in the lives. Peace out.